everybody welcome back to let's talk i am your trainer meera guys i was always that person who used to get really excited um reading dictionaries especially when it comes to new words i always end up finding the origin of that word some words are french origin portuguese origin arabic origin similarly there are certain english words which are indian origin and that is exactly what we are going to learn today now let us make this session really exciting and fun i'm sure you will get to know something really really interesting and you can start using it in your day to day lives let's quickly start with our first word and that is bandana now we all know that bandana at one point was a style statement they're basically scarves which you can tie around your head or your neck so what are they scarves to tie around your heads and necks which usually is very colorful and bright and vibrant they basically protect your hair from getting all tangled right i'm sure most of you have bought it at one point of time or are currently using it well i use it under my helmet when i ride a scooter now let's move on to the next word which is chutney now this word especially is in the english dictionary because it's now widely used all over the world it's basically a nice and tangy and spicy mixture of different vegetables and fruits that you can eat with indian bread so what is it it's a dip it's a dip that you can eat with anything probably rice or probably indian bread right like i said now moving on to the next word very quickly guru most of us have heard this but did we know that it was sanskrit and indian origin and what does it actually mean it means a person who is really really experienced and is elderly as well experienced in what in any field that he's been researching about or studying about and what he does is that he helps other people understand that topic and guide them well right give them a different advices so he could be um um a management guru as well right someone who's um elderly and right experienced elderly and knowledgeable who would train you and guide you moving on to the next word which is yoga an extremely widely known and people are going crazy about this type of exercise was was is from an indian origin did you guys know that absolutely well what is the yoga exactly it's um a type of an exercise to keep your body mind and soul in line very peaceful very relaxing and calming but don't take yoga wrong it could be very very difficult as well and i can make sure that you will sweat more than sweating in a gym i can promise you that now what is yoga it's a type of exercise right which is also from indian origin well moving on to the next word which is hulabalu Sounds a little crazy, right? And fun. But what does it mean? Well, hulabalu means um a group of angry people who are making a loud noise together. So how you can use it in a sentence? Um I had gone to the temple the other day and there was so much hulabalu around us, which means a lot of people who were making a loud noise. or probably you were outside a movie theater and there was a lot of hullabaloo around you which means a lot of angry people making loud noise right that's how you can use hullabaloo which means loud noise by angry people okay moving on to mantra now what does mantra mean mantra is basically uh, a hymn or a word which is 
repeatedly used for focus and concentration. And something like Om, right, where you continuously keep, keep making that sound Om so that you can concentrate. And that is what mantra is, words or a sound repeatedly used. And nowadays, we also say that my mantra in life is to live life king size. What does that mean? We are actually trying to say that I repeatedly tell myself to live life king size. Again, the same meaning, but it's your mantra that you follow. My mantra could also be stay healthy, stay happy. If I'm repeatedly telling this to myself and I'm repeatedly working on it for my happiness and concentration, that becomes my mantra, right? What is your mantra, guys? Tell me in the comment section. Okay, so mantra is a word or sentence repeated continuously in your head, okay? Moving on to the next word, which is, you guessed it right, it's yar. Yar has been, has been recently added in the dictionary, and what does that mean? It's a very informal way of addressing a friend in India. For example, you would end up saying, Hare yar, come, let's go for a movie. You're basically addressing your friend and telling your friend to, hey, just let's just go for a movie, right? Another way informal and a little slang, but an informal way to address your friend. Okay, now khaki is a, is a type of cloth, which is usually pale yellow or um, the color of sand. And it was, it's essentially used for uh, military purposes and for um, military men to wear them as their daily clothes because they're very rough and tough. And that is what khaki represents. And that is also included in the English dictionary now. It's a rough cloth, usually pale yellow or sand in color, a little brownish tinge, okay? So military uh, people used to wear khaki color clothes or khaki clothes, okay? Let's move on to the next word, which is chit. Now, a very short word for a Hindi word called chitti. Chitti basically is a piece of um, an information on a piece of paper, which is uh, which I provide to someone or I give to someone, and its short form or a short word out of chitti, which is a Hindi word, is a chit, a small piece of paper with a sh with short information written on it. Right, moving on, dinghi. Now, what does dinghi mean? It's another word, the, the actual Hindi word for dinghi is dinghi, similar word, which actually means a small boat for rowing purposes, and it's actually open air. Nowadays, um, dinghi is used for recreational activity or just for simple fun and rowing, probably for some competitions as well in the south of India. And this basically means an open air, small boat. Okay, moving on to the next word, which is punch. Well, not the punch punch, but this is basically a drink. Um, essentially, it means um, a drink made with five different ingredients and mix of different ingredients. So there could have been wine, there could be rum in it, and different um, juices of different fruits. Basically, panch comes from a Hindi or a Sanskrit word, panch, which means five. And that is why we there, there are times when people say, hey, I'm going for rum punch, which actually comes from um, 
from, comes from a place where people used to get together and have this drink, which was a mix of five ingredients. It's basically a drink of five ingredients, all right? Uh, now, moving on to the next word, which is sari. Now, S-A-R-I or S-A-R-E-E -E is both, they're both the same. That's basically a really long cloth, uh, which is draped around women um, for daily life purposes, for daily uses, just like our trousers or pants or t-shirts. Saris are the Indian version of clothing for women on a daily road purposes. So it's a clothing. All right, moving from sari to shawl, another, um, another piece of cloth which is basically wrapped around during winters or in the northern side of India where the, when there is a lot of cold and there's, um, it's very, very cold outside and that is when you use a soft wool that protects you from the winter and from the cold and that is what a shawl is, right? Again, to wrap around mostly your shoulders, okay? Sari would be all over, right? But shawl is just for the shoulders. Now, Kashmir. This word comes from um, a place in India called Kashmir, which is actually uh, from the letter K, which is in the northern side of India, right? And there, there is actually a goat which provides with the most um, soft wool and very uh, a wool that can actually protect you from um, great winters. And that is how we derive the word Kashmir from this goat which, you, which actually gives you really, really soft wool, okay? So Kashmir is soft wool clothing. Well, now the thing is, you can have a cashmere shawl as well. You can have a cashmere sweater or a jumper or a pullover or just a wrap around, around your neck, which is of cashmere material or wool. Got it? Perfect. Moving on to jute, another very, very rough and tough material of it, which is woven and you can make baskets out of it or bags out of it. Nowadays, jute has become so common and it's very common in use um, for fashion purposes, right from making handbags to shopping bags. Um, people use jute for a lot of purposes, but initially it used to be, they used to make baskets, like fruit baskets and vegetable baskets, and it's very, very rough and tough, okay? Another, you can make what? Baskets out of it or bags out of it. Okay, it's another rough and tough material. Moving on to the last word for the day, which is veranda. It's nothing but an open space outside the house where um, families get together, they talk to one another. Initially, this word did not exist in English dictionary because um, there was no particular um, space as veranda in, in the UK because of the cold um, winters out there, you know, they usually had small areas, but not veranda. Veranda is a really, really large space where you can probably play around or sit around and gather with your family, right? It's an open space outside the house. Okay. So there you go, you have different varieties today with words which are from Indian origin. I'm sure you have learned something new today and I'm sure you would use it in your daily life sentences. I hope that you've enjoyed today. I will meet you really soon with just another interesting topic right here. This is me, Mira, signing off for the day. Bye.